Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of Food and a Single Guy with me, your very own Amaru. Now on this episode of Food and a Single Guy, I am going to cook Krontobana, a very old and very ancient traditional recipe from my country, and it's very similar to the Jamaican Rondong recipe, all right? Now when I say old and ancient, I am talking back in the days of slavery or even beyond. That is how old we're talking, all right? Now I know some of you don't like it when I talk too much, but baby, when I share a recipe from my country, I have to give you the backstory. I am not one of those people that come on YouTube and set up a camera and starts cooking and not tell you what it is that I'm doing. No, I need to inform you, especially when it pertains to recipes from my country, because my country is a very small country. In fact, it is the smallest country on the continent of South America and I love it. So I have to give you the backstory. I get a lot of comments, oh, you talk too much. No, bitch, I don't talk too much. You are impatient, you need not be here. You need to keep it moving, chaka chaka, come on, move it. You know, so those of you that are interested in the backstory, this is a very old and ancient dish. Now, I have to forewarn you, this dish is very fattening, it is very rich, you don't wanna overeat because your waistline is not gonna love you, all right, and I have never made this before. No, 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 no. This is the first time ever that I'm making this myself, and the last time that I had this was somewhere in 1984, I believe. I have seen my dad, may he rest in peace, I have seen my dad make this so many times, and he would make it for people, but never for the family. So when he made it for the family that one time, you guys, I am telling you, I died and went to heaven 16 times. It was so good, but I never made it myself until today. So I want to share with you um, the cooking process. I know how it's done. I know what it should taste like. And um, I tasted it and it was good. It was good. Now you guys, I also have to let you know that back in the day, these people didn't have a choice in the matter as far as eating was concerned because they were given what they were given and they had to make do with what they had, right? In addition to that, it didn't matter how many times a week they ate this type of food because they performed such an incredible amount of manual labor on the land, in the elements. So that balanced everything out. So they would have this a couple of times a week but it didn't affect their waistlines, as opposed to us, you know, in this era that we're living where everybody's on their phone all the damn time, everybody's sitting watching television all the damn time, everybody's behind the computer way too long, exercise a little bit, all right? I have a weight problem and that is why I go to the gym on a regular basis. This is not how I eat every day, so cut me some slack. I am not interested in your judgment. I am not interested in your finger pointing. That is why I am prefacing this video by giving you all of that added information. Don't you think that I know that if I ate like this every day, I would blow up like the Pillsbury Doughboy? That is not what I want. I go to the gym every day to look good. I want to continue to look good. In fact, this is what I look like these days. Do you think I'm going to mess up all of that goodness just in case somebody wants to snatch away some of this goodness? No, boo -boo. That is not what I want, you guys. I've worked very hard to get to this weight. And when I say that, I don't mean that I was big like a house. No. The thing is, I have always been very tall, so people would always tell me, you're not fat. And I'm like, bitch. Don't let me take off this t-shirt, you know. So I saw my weight and I was like, dang, nigga, you need to do something, you know. So I did something about it, but, but this is my fate. I have to keep on working at it because if I don't, I will blow up. I'm getting older and as we get older, it is very difficult to lose weight. Tell me about it. So you guys, I'm gonna list all the ingredients in the information box below the video for your pleasure, for your convenience. And um, without further ado, let us continue. Okay, you guys, so what I have here are my ripe plantains. And although these are ripe, they're not overripe. They're not soggy. Sometimes when you buy plantains, you have to feel them. If they're soft, they're not good enough for this recipe, all right? So what I'm gonna do next, I am going to um, remove the ends, just like this. And then I am going to cut them at an angle, just like so. 
and we're gonna boil these in the skin. You wanna lock in the flavors, the nutrients, the vitamins. That is what I always do. So let me go ahead and um, continue. And these don't take long to cook. They're tender in about maybe 15 minutes tops. And there you have it you guys. These plantains are on their way to boil them. Yeah, that's not a word, I know. But a clear indication that your plantains are ready, you will see that the skin will rip lengthwise. That will indicate that the plantains are ready. Or you can also prick them with a fork just to see if they're soft. See what I mean you guys? These have been boiling for about 10 minutes and we're going to allow them to cook for another 5 to 7 minutes and then I'm going to show you how to remove the skin and how to prepare this for the rest of the dish. Alright? Okay guys, so now we're going to remove the skin and this is piping hot. I don't know why the hell I'm doing it with my bare hands, but you know, just like so. See? And then you put it on your plate. Now let's continue. Okay, you guys, so we're done. And this is what the plantains look like. Steaming away nicely. Mmm baby okay you guys so this is my coconut milk and this coconut milk is even creamier than the one that I juiced yesterday and keep in mind you guys as I said in the previous video if you're going to blend your coconut meat in a blender use hot water it has everything to do with the fatty acids in the coconut and the coagulation of that fat all right so use hot water and what we're gonna do next we're gonna bring this coconut milk to a boil but this dish is the type of dish where you would have to have everything that goes in the dish. You would have to have everything ready. So I have my tenderized salted beef. I have my plantains. As you can see, they're still steaming away nicely. I have my garlic. I have my scotch bonnet pepper. I have my onions. Honey, we are ready to cook. Okay, guys, we're now going to pour the coconut milk into our pot. And I'm trying not to make a mess. There we go. Doesn't this look very nice and rich and creamy, you guys? Oh, but it does. And the reason you want to have all of your ingredients ready, you guys, is because the minute this comes to a boil, the minute the oil starts to separate, that is when you would have to add all of your ingredients. You cannot wait a minute longer than that, all right? But I'm going to show you as we progress. All righty then. As you can see, my coconut milk is coming to a boil. But we're not quite ready to add the ingredients. We still have to wait. The minute you see a little bit of oil forming at the top, that is when you add the ingredients. So we still have a, a little while to go. And you should not be in a hurry to cook this, you guys. This is not one of those dishes that you want to rush. No, you want to take your time preparing this. As you can see, the coconut milk is boiling away nicely. It's not quite ready yet though. It still has to cook down a little bit more. Now you guys, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, you can see a little bit of the oil starting to form. And we're almost ready to add the onions and the garlic and the rest of the ingredients. Baby, let me tell you, it is smelling delicious up in here. Mm. Okay guys, we're now ready to add the garlic, just like so, the scotch bonnet pepper, and the onions. We're going to give that a nice stir. And you want to cook this on high heat, you guys, with a regular or continuous stir, alright? Now, back in the olden days, people would use salt, but I'm going to use a vegetable stock cube because that's what I like. And be mindful of the salt that you're adding to this dish, you guys, because the coconut is already salty, as is the salted beef, all right? And speaking of which, we are now going to add the salted beef. And this is after a minute or three to five of continuous stirring and cooking. Now traditionally people would use salted fish to cook this dish with, 
but my dad said you could also use salted beef so that is why I'm using salted beef and as you can see I am stirring continuously because if you don't it is gonna turn into an oily mess and that is not what you want we're trying to keep it nice and creamy so this is basically done but what we're gonna add at the very last are the boiled plantains just like so you give that a nice stir just like that honey let me tell you may my dad rest in peace and may his legacy live on in this dish oh my word yes oh it smells delicious you guys all right you guys and now for the final presentation as you can see it is still steaming away nicely it smells delicious we are going to sprinkle some freshly chopped parsley on top just like so because color makes everything prettier right all right now you guys you know I don't like to eat on camera but this right here I just have to mm. Mm, mm, mm. Let me get some of that salted beef. Honey. Mm, mm. I can only hope that I've done my father's recipe justice. This is the first time ever that I'm cooking this. I know what it's supposed to taste like. Mm. I have taken enough lessons. I have watched people cook this. I know how it's done, but I've never yet cooked this myself. Oh, mm, mm, mm. you guys, ooh, this is so good. Oh. I'm having a mukbang moment, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand why people do mukbang videos. I don't, I, I don't get it. It's entertaining to some, but to me not so much because you just sit there and eat and people watch you eat. That's not entertaining to me. But anyway, let me go ahead and eat my krontobana. Ya air, mena. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. It has that nice salted beef in it. Yeah, man. Let call it rondong in Jamaica. Mm. Girl, let me tell you now. Mm, mm, mm. Now, you guys, this is one of those dishes that will make your great, 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 great ancestor Irma come back from the dead. And she would walk into the kitchen and she would say, Nah, girl, that is some serious food. Now I'm gonna go back to my casket. You don't believe me? Make this dish, I dare you. And let me know what Irma said. <laughs> I'm a loon, I'm a loon, I know. Now you guys, all shenanigans aside, if you decide to try this recipe, let me know how it turned out because I'm always interested in hearing from you. It is so good. Now at the beginning of this video, I said that this is very reminiscent and very similar to a dish that they have in Jamaica. They call it rondong. Okay, so I spoke to my friend from Jamaica and we talked about this recipe and she said, well, this sounds like something that we have up here. I said, well, I'm going to make my version and then we're going to compare both versions because I think her video is already up. So, um, yeah, I cannot wait to hear her verdict on that. You guys, again, if you decide to try it, please do. You will love it. I cannot tell you how grateful I am to my dad for, you know, sharing this with us. May he rest in peace. And as I said earlier, I hope that I did his legacy justice. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Have a good weekend, and I will see you when I see you. Bye.